Hello again, it's Steve Fentress on behalf of the Strassenburg Planetarium at your Rochester Museum and Science Center, this week enjoying Venus, which has been appearing as an evening star and will soon reappear as a morning star. Here's the free Stellarium software you can play with at home, and we've got it set for February 27th, 2020, when the moon was appearing near Venus. Ecliptic update, that's just a fancy way of saying the, the Earth's orbit projected onto the sky. And here's the orbit of the planet Venus. And we're going to keep the time of day frozen at the moment of sunset and step through a couple of days at a time to see how Venus has been changing its place in our evening sky over the past few weeks. And on March 24th, Venus reached a kind of apex there at the top of that loop of its orbit. That's when it was farther from the sun's glare than at any other time this spring. And since then, it has been dropping. So if you go out at sunset every evening, you're noticing it lower and lower. And it is going to drop faster and faster as we go into May. And then at the end of May, it quickly plunges into the glare of the sun. Until on June 3rd, it's almost exactly between us and the sun, and so we won't see it. Here's an outer space view of the same series of events using the NASA's EYES software. And we start on March 24th, and at that time the line of sight from Earth to Venus was as far as possible from the line of sight from Earth to the Sun. That's technically called greatest eastern elongation. But what it means is Venus is really easy to see. Now we go forward in time to the time when Venus passes between Earth and the Sun, almost exactly, June 3rd. And this time is called inferior conjunction. That's a confusing term that comes from ancient ideas about how the solar system was laid out, but we're stuck with it. And that happened June 3rd, or will happen June 3rd. We go forward in time, and now Venus is getting farther from the Sun as seen from Earth, we reach August 13th, 2020. And this will be the time when Venus is most prominent in the morning sky, farthest from the rising sun in the morning sky. And then after this, we can go forward in time. And you can do this yourself and follow the pattern after that. While all this is happening, if we monitor Venus every night through a telescope, we see it go through changes. First, it gets closer to us, so it gets bigger in our telescope. But also, it goes through phases like the phases of our moon. The side facing us has less and less sunlight on it as the planet approaches us. So the planet getting closer tends to make it look brighter, but the fact that there's less illumination on our side tends to make it look dimmer. Those two factors work together to keep Venus pretty darn bright until very close to the time that it's almost between us and the sun, and there is essentially no sunshine on the side facing us. And you can look at one of our favorite websites, Astronomy Picture of the Day, search on Venus, and you can see photographs of the real planet going through this cycle of changes. Venus will return in the morning sky this summer. So we start on June 3rd, and we're getting up at sunrise and checking every morning. And by the end of June, you'll see Venus rapidly rising into the eastern sky. So early risers will have a brilliant morning star. And Venus will top out farther from the sun than at any other time this summer in the morning sky on August 13th, technically called greatest western elongation, and then through the fall plunge back into the glare of the sun. Now, let's look at the outer space point of view again, but this time we're going to stick with it for a few years to notice an interesting relationship between the timing of Venus in its orbit and the timing of Earth's movement in its orbit. So we're using the NASA's eyes software again. And we've started on June 6th, 2012, the last time we had an arrangement of Earth, Venus, and Sun that was similar to what we're having in June 2020. And we're going to use a feature of the software to draw a line of sight from Earth to Venus. 
And now we're going to keep score. How many orbits are completed by Earth? How many orbits are completed by Venus? And how many times does Venus pass the Earth? How many inferior conjunctions are there? And we're off. Right there, that was a superior conjunction. When Venus is on the far side of the Sun, at those times we can't see it for a couple of months. There's Venus passing Earth, our first inferior conjunction since we started keeping score. Venus is ahead of Earth, three orbits to two. Venus has a shorter way to go and it moves faster, so it's gaining on Earth constantly. Here comes another inferior conjunction. And Venus is about to complete another orbit since we started, so Venus is ahead six to three. Venus passes Earth again. And the lead is constantly increasing. Venus is now ahead of Earth nine orbits to five with three inferior conjunctions. There's another one. And we are going to approach June of 2020. And so we'll slow the motion down as we approach the finish line here to see what happens. And we're going to stop when that line of sight from Earth to Venus points right at the Sun on June 3rd, 2020. And then we'll keep going from there. So what we saw was that eight Earth orbits is almost exactly the same as 13 Venus orbits. Interesting relationship. Eight Earth years is almost exactly the same as 13 Venus years. And during one of those cycles, Venus will pass the Earth five times. And this cycle repeats over and over again. This line of sight from Earth to Venus was the inspiration for the idea of a Zeiss planetarium projector. Zeiss engineer Walter Bowersfeld noticed this back in 1914. Here's the Venus projector. And see that rod sticking out there? That is a rod that connects from a pivot on the edge of the Earth wheel to a pivot on the edge of the Venus wheel. Those two wheels are made to turn in the correct speed relationship to represent the motions of Earth and Venus. And then the Venus projector is mounted on that rod. So as those two wheels turn, the projector makes a dot on the dome that sweeps out the path of Venus in our sky as it appears from Earth. Brilliant mechanical insight by Dr. Walter Bowersfeld at Zeiss back in 1914. And this was the idea that made the projection planetarium really possible as a mechanical device. Now we can do it digitally and we can get much more accurately, uh, uh, much more accurate on the very close approaches of the planets, but we have to marvel at the ingenuity of this mechanism. Well, while we were away, we went ahead to 2028 and saw a repeat of the situation we have in 2020. Again, Earth and Venus in line with the Sun. The pattern repeats every eight years, almost exactly. Maybe you remember back in April, Venus appeared almost exactly in front of the Pleiades star cluster, and we can use our Stellarium star uh, simulation software to simply find that date and then step forward in steps of eight years, and we see, yes, it's true. The position of Venus is almost exactly the same at eight-year intervals. There's a little bit of drift here as we go out farther into the 21st century, but not much. So the positions of Venus and our sky repeat almost exactly at an eight-year interval. Now, when we were looking at those inferior conjunctions where Venus gets almost between us and the Sun, sometimes, rarely, it gets exactly between us and the Sun. That kind of event is called a transit of Venus. And if you're an astronomy fan, maybe you remember this happened back on June 8, 2004, early in the morning. Venus appeared as a black dot on the face of the sun, using safety glasses, of course. And then it happened eight years later, June 5, 2012, and this one was in the evening as seen from Rochester. The sun was setting while the transit of Venus was in progress. 
These events are pretty rare. The next one will happen December 11th, 2017, 2117. And the next transit of Venus visible from Rochester will be December 8th, 2125. I used the Stellarium software to check every inferior conjunction of Venus over many years. And you can see most of the time, there's 2004, Venus was squarely in front of the sun. There was a transit, but not in 2006. And you'll see most of the time Venus misses the sun, except on those rare occasions that produce a transit of Venus. There's 2012 when we had that transit, but not in 2014. 2015, not even close. 2017, way off. 2018, nope. 2020, June 3rd, pretty close, but not close enough. Looking for a history and literature project, consider Walt Whitman's poem, When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed, written in the spring of 1865, prompted by the assassination of President Lincoln, which occurred on April 15th, and one of the images in that poem is the uh, western orb, the fallen drooping star in the west, along with lilacs and the song of the hermit thrush. Reading this poem to the end is a powerful emotional experience, you have been warned. But let's look at the sky in the spring of 1865, as Whitman would have seen it, and the situation is not too different from what we have right now. If you were to go out for an evening walk at sunset, you would have seen every evening Venus appearing lower and lower in our sky, and if you stayed out till dark, you would see it sink into the huge and thoughtful night, as Whitman called it. Well, let's remember what a harsh place Venus really is. This is how it appears with a camera that sees the kind of light our eyes see, white clouds of sulfuric acid. If we use an ultraviolet light camera, like this one on the Hubble Space Telescope, or this one on the Japanese Akatsuki spacecraft, the upper layer of clouds look a little more, looks a little more interesting. We can use radar to look through the clouds and see weird volcanoes and other strange geological formations on a planet that's extremely hot and has no plate tectonics. A few Russian landers have survived long enough to take a few pictures on the surface. 900 degrees day and night, sulfuric acid clouds. The Akatsuki infrared camera has found the middle layer of clouds on Venus looks different from the upper layer. Well, enjoy Venus as it appears in the sky. Spaceweather.com will have photographs that people have taken. So will astronomy picture of the day. Let's look forward to April 26th, 2020, coming right up. A crescent moon will appear near Venus. It'll be pretty close on April 25th as well. So let's hope for clear enough weather to see these two beautiful objects setting in the west together just as the stars begin to appear. So enjoy watching for Venus, and thanks for watching our video today.